All right. Ben Minerva, or Ben Nelson of Minerva. Apology. Thank you so much for uh, uh, for having me. Um, I know we're running a little bit behind schedule, so I'll I'll keep my uh, remarks a little bit more brief uh, to make sure that we get back on track. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit today about the idea of a new vision of a campus, and perhaps giving you a little bit of context about uh, Minerva and what we've done when we built our own university, and now what we are helping other universities do as they reimagine what it is that they can do with their campus and with their educational programs. So Minerva started in order to rethink what the centering of education should be. And rather than having it focused on disciplinary silos where students acquire some information so they can pass the test, and then, as we all know, uh, certainly if we're honest with ourselves, often forget what was on that test a few months after they've taken it. Instead, we believe that we should create a university that actually enables students to retain what it is that they've learned, not just in disciplinary areas, but far more importantly, in areas that cut across disciplines, ones where students learn how to apply what they learn in the real world. Now, we were committed from day one to a residential university experience. And all of our students not only lived together, they lived in the same building. Yet, even though we started offering classes eight years ago, we never allowed our students to congregate in a physical classroom to learn. We were committed to social learning. We were committed to seminar style education. All of our classes, in fact, are small, less than 20 students. They're led by a professor. They're all live. They're all synchronous. But starting eight years ago, despite the fact that all of our students were in one location, we decided, no, 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 we have to create a better learning infrastructure. We created a digital learning environment, which I believe today is still the most sophisticated digital learning environment in the world, that enables students not just to learn from a professor, not just to make sure that they're engaged every minute of every class and make sure that there are activities built into the platform that enable that to occur, not even just to ensure flexibility and where they take their classes from, but we believe far more importantly, receive the kind of programmatic education where what they learn in one class builds and scaffolds into other classes they take both in parallel as well as serially afterwards. And that process enabled us to rethink what the campus experience should be like. All of a sudden, we realized, well, we're going to have the students live together, but we really want them to understand what the real world is like. We don't want to create a bubble. And so first and foremost, we realized maybe our professors don't all need to be co-located with the students. In fact, our students only spent their first year in San Francisco, where we're based. And then over the next three years, they traveled as a cohort, living in other Minerva buildings in six other cities around the world. So they got exposure to the way the world works broadly. And we realized that if we were to try to hire all of their professors in each of those locations, that would be challenging. It would limit our pool of talent. So we realized, wait a second, if the students are all together, but their classes are all delivered via form, which is our digital learning environment, the professors don't actually need to be co-located with the students. And all of a sudden, we don't need to create the infrastructure that's necessary to house and certainly to provide the office space and all of the other locations that are necessary for co-locating professors. And meanwhile, it gives our professors enormous flexibility as to where they want to live. We then thought, well, that's, you know, the, the other major aspect of the campus is are all the amenities, right? I remember when I went to, to school, we had our own museum, of course, cafeterias, 
Of course, we had uh, libraries and uh, all sorts of recreational activities. We had the little food courts that were designed by the university that weren't part of the cafeteria, but were kind of in the student union with the fast food options. And you know what? They were all much, much worse than what was available in the city around us. The museum at the university was nowhere near as, as good as the museums in the city itself. The cafeteria did not provide better food, and certainly the restaurants, the restaurants, the fast food joints that were uh, selected by by the um, by the university were much, much worse. Not only than the restaurants and supermarkets that were available in the city, but even by the food trucks that just kind of rolled in and showed up uh, and provided much cheaper, much tastier food. And all of the trappings and the amenities, the gyms, the, um, the entire campus infrastructure didn't actually <laughs> provide better value than what, 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 what was surrounding us in the city naturally. And so we realized that a much better approach would be rather than replicating infrastructure that existed around us to leverage it. And all of a sudden, our, I have a little bit of an echo, apologize. Um, all of a sudden, the, the campus environment turned out to be a city environment. It turned out to be a lived environment where the students take advantage of what they have around them. Rather than providing them cafeteria food, we made sure to provide them kitchens where they could prepare their own food where they could actually go and learn how to navigate the real world and live as they would, not just after they graduate, but really over the summers. If they were to get an internship in a city that's not at home, they needed to live independently. They needed to know what it's like to live independently. We also made sure that the entire educational program was then reinforced by immersing students with their local community. In our case, the communities that they were to immerse in, be resident in, over their four years. Now, obviously, this isn't to suggest that every university needs to say, oh, well, you know what, this giant campus that we have and all this infrastructure, we should throw it out. There is some use for campuses, um, and especially for co-location of services. But... When we are now working with universities, and just like we set up our own university, we're now beginning to work with other universities to create new programs. And those programs don't presuppose the existing structure. They think about what can a residential university look like that provides the absolute best education for the students but doesn't just use the same formula of if you add one more student, you have to do X more classroom space, office space, uh, et cetera. There have been universities that have calculated that adding a, uh, a couple of thousand new students would cost more than a billion dollars in capital infrastructure costs. But we've demonstrated that you can actually generate additional residential students with clever programming without really adding any costs at all in, from a physical infrastructure perspective. And most importantly, by rethinking what you do with your campus, you can elevate the quality of your programs. It may be surprising for those of you who don't know about Minerva, that Minerva University, despite being extraordinarily small, having only about 150 or so students per year, receives more than 25,000 applications from more than 190 countries around the world. It not only has an extraordinary level of demand, but the outcomes that we produce with our students are among the best in the world. In fact, if you compare the graduating Minerva class and the kinds of jobs that they get the entrepreneurial activities that they have, the graduate school placements that they secure, they index above any Ivy League university graduating class. Yet, whereas the modal student in an Ivy League university is a millionaire, and as we all know, 
the vast majority of students in the Ivy League come from the top 5% of households in the country, socioeconomically speaking. In Minerva, the modal student comes from a household that makes less than $25,000 a year. 60% of our students come from households making less than $50,000 a year. And then for being able to provide that kind of social mobility actually is connected not only with our educational philosophy, not only with the approach that we have to teach them systematic thinking, but also their lived experience. <laughs> so uh, given the echoes and, and everything that, that is uh, coming across, I hope you're hearing me okay. Um, I wanted to maybe just wrap up and, uh, and explain a little bit about how we partner with institutions to rethink how they leverage their campus experience and how they rethink their educational programs first and foremost. And that really is where our engagement start. We work with universities that have the ambition to provide the best educational programs in the world. We don't really work with universities who are satisfied with the programs that they have today and just want to expand them to make more money or to just serve more students. And therefore, we are uh, enabling universities, first and foremost, to reimagine the educational enterprise. And we've built brand new programs for leading institutions and are in the process of building others. <laughs> so for example, um, the University of Miami is working on a new century college to celebrate their centennial in 2025. We're collaborating with them to design that new century college. We're also working to create a new honors college with Paul Quinn College, which is a historically black university, an extraordinarily forward thinking institution in Texas. We're engaging with uh, on some master's in executive education programming with places like University of Southern California and, and Berkeley Law. We're even working on general education reform with Shenandoah University in Virginia. Right? And those are just examples of some domestic partnerships. We also work with universities all over the world. We're launching new universities in Korea and Mexico. We're working with Estade, which is one of the top business schools in the world, where we've helped them launch a new triple bottom line business program, the first new undergraduate program since they were founded 60 years ago. And we're even working to do a wholesale transformation of one of the three federal universities in the United Arab Emirates that will transform a traditional siloed approach to education to an interdisciplinary, connected systems thinking approach to education and will change the way their entire undergraduate population learns over the coming five years. And so these are all examples of collaborations. And you'll notice that they're all different from one another. We don't show up with a predetermined playbook on what to teach. In fact, quite the opposite. We work with our universities and the experts that they have to determine what are the outcomes that they want to see for their students and the content areas they want to illustrate that. But what we do is apply the methodology that has enabled not only Minerva University, but all of our partners to provide such exceptional educational outcomes. And we use that methodology, the curricular approach, the pedagogical approach, in order to ensure that our partners get the same kind of effect and impact for their students. But then it carries much further because the immediate question outside of developing the curriculum is to think about, well, what is the student experience like? And this is where leveraging the assets of the campus in more clever ways comes in. All of a sudden, I think about what kinds of programming should be done in a digital learning environment and what kind of programming should be done in a physical environment and rethinking the split between those two things. We work with our partners to go deep in that process and to think about how to take the curricular approach and carry it through the entire student experience, whether it is directly on university facilities or 
using and leveraging the environment that they're in, and potentially even enabling their students <laughs> to spend a year or even two years not on the physical campus, but actually continuing their education with the university, having grounded there, but taking it forward with them in other locations around the world, much like we've done at our own university. And so all of this is to say that there is no one approach to educating students, certainly not from the mix of their experiences, certainly not in the subject areas that they study, certainly not in the frameworks that they use. However, there is there are decades of research that demonstrate how it is to be the most effective at teaching individual students. And we leverage that scientific approach in all of our designs. Well, that uh, will we'll do it for my time. I only have a, a minute or two left. Um, and I wanted to thank you all for, uh, for uh, listening and, be, and uh, uh, joining us today. Um, if anybody is interested in learning more about what Minerva does, you can just go to minervaproject.com uh, or just type in Minerva on Google. Uh, it's either us or the goddess. And uh, we very much look forward to, uh, to collaborating and hearing more with, about, with all of you. So thank you so much again for the time, and I'll hand it back over. <laughs>